Hello everyone and welcome back to Dog Sled Saga and it's just gonna keep coming up with this, isn't it? We can't afford to hire another dog, but uh, we're not going to. We're, we're, we're not gonna do that right now. Uh, it looks like we have some pretty tough races coming up too, but we've been making a lot of good headway in the uh, previous episodes. We've been training up our B team to be pretty much just as good as the A team here and we've made some good progress. So we have, I'm trying to find out where yeah, we, 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 I'm trying to find out where it says, there we go, specialty middle level one for Tyrion, and he has seven experience, and then we just got Pepper to level two in our last race, so these guys are definitely making good headway, they're also gaining rapport with the rest of their team, but uh, we definitely need to keep training them, so that hopefully then, eventually, we'll be able to breed them. Now, we also have earned quite a bit of money here, I definitely want to keep raising that as much as possible, because we know where it's going to take a huge toll when we go to breed our dogs, and we need to be able to afford that so we don't lose all of our money but we're gonna go ahead we will switch to caretaking we'll put the others in training and I don't think anybody had any significant amount of uh, fatigue yet looks like we can just switch everybody right back over to training again and continue on now I think we're probably gonna have to race a team for this next one because it seems like it's gonna be pretty tough but uh, and it is a clear race as well so no night races we really have to put talent in whenever we can whenever there's a night race uh, his flaw isn't that bad, thankfully, but we still want to keep his uh, happiness up so that we don't have to deal with it. And here we go. It's a high stakes race. We'll get like $10,000 for winning, but it's extremely difficult. So yeah, I don't think there's any question about it. We have to race our A-team. I don't even think... Yeah, it's going to be high exhaustion for Talon, and he's a wheel dog. So we definitely need to race our A-team for this one. We, we can't afford to have anything except for low exhaustion. So let's go ahead and do that. These guys are already set up to race, and here we go. Hopefully this doesn't end terribly. Uh, here we go. We have a tree already. Uh, they shouldn't have high exhaustion, so I think we'll be able to handle the lower restocks, but uh, I really just do not know. All right, I'm going to let this tree go by, and then, oh no, oh boy. And is somebody going to get that? Oh, she still caught it. Okay, oh no, I think I missed there. Oh no, we're starting to get fatigue already. Oh, do not tangle, do not tangle. Oh my goodness. All right, oh, you still have, you're still tired. Oh my goodness. Okay, we definitely have to keep feeding everyone. That was actually perfect timing to feed Avalanche. All right, we got to jump and feed Zephyr, feed Polaris. We missed Zephyr. No, Zephyr, come on. No, Zephyr, he's going to take he's gonna take uh, exhaustion if we're not careful. Oh, his skill is showing up. I will try to feed him again there. All right, stay forward, stay forward. Don't need anybody taking um, exhaustion there. Okay, jump, jump, jump. Oh, no, we just barely missed it. Oh, everybody's going to get tangled if we're not careful. Oh, I'm sorry. I was trying to make sure Avalanche got his food. Polaris didn't get his food. We're actually getting to the point where it probably would be beneficial to not take every race that we get. All right, come on. Jump, 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 jump. There we go. We need to make sure that we don't have that happen again. Oh no, we missed. We didn't get to activate uh, Polaris's skill. We definitely are taking some pretty bad fatigue. This probably would have been a race that uh, would be have been better off left alone. All right, do not tangle. There we go. You can, you can have food too, except the tree took it. There we go. We're right at the end. Are we going to be able to pull into first? Oh no, just I thought we were going to for a moment. But second place still ain't bad, although that's not going to help Polaris any. He likes to get first. So unfortunately we didn't succeed with that. I don't think we're going to take a rope sponsorship because even though I like that, I want to make sure we get our funding up. But uh, we might take that in the future. We'll, we'll have to see here. <laughs> but I'm definitely going to be putting everyone in resting here. And we'll slowly switch them back. Okay, we need to just change that back to training. And we'll make sure that as they recover, thankfully nobody took horrific fatigue, but it still was not great. I was hoping it would be a lot better. We're honestly getting to the point where in some ways it would be better to decline races because we can't risk having our, our A team out of commission if we have a race that's going to be too difficult for the B team to handle. And that is a distinct possibility at this point because they're not fully trained. So we'll just continue on. We got another race here. And this one actually seems like it's going to be a lot better. So I'm going to try and see if we can get our B team in. If we put White out and then we put Tyrion and Pepper 
And Aria, uh, nope, that's not happening. So we're still gonna race A team. <laughs> All right, these guys are fine. We'll put an Avalanche in the front and Polaris in the back. And here we go, we're gonna go ahead. We'll have to race these guys again. Hopefully this time we can actually win, but you can see how we had just re uh, recovered from the last race and now we're having to race again immediately. That's what I'm hoping to avoid, and that's when I will choose not to participate in a race. Usually that's the reason why. All right, I think that's all right. It did make it to him, thankfully, even though we threw it when we were jumping. So that works. These two are both charging up. So, oh no, somebody's fault came out. Oh no, she's dropped. That's drop speed. That's not a good fault. Oh my goodness, no. No, we can't afford tangles. Not when we have to be jumping at any moment. All right, we've got a tree. I'm gonna have to try to feed some of the lower or some of the farther back dogs so that we don't uh, we don't lose it to the tree. Oh no, Avalanche missed his. I didn't realize that he had. Okay, jump, 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 jump quickly before you tangle. Otherwise, we're going to have some problems. These two need food still, and we gotta jump. We gotta feed Zephyr as well. The tree took his. He's probably gonna get a little bit of fatigue. Oh, I think he actually didn't. Let's make sure we feed the lead dogs as well. And just barely missed first again. Oh, Polaris, I'm sorry. Polaris has the, uh, he likes to, to win, basically. So we didn't take nearly as much fatigue this time, but we still didn't win. So still not the greatest for Polaris, but it could have been significantly worse. We've kind of had a bit of a rocky start to this episode, and, uh, yeah, that, oops, Avalanche still needs to be resting uh, that's that's not the greatest. Definitely not what I was hoping for. Also, if you guys are watching it as or watching this as it airs, the Iditarod is underway. You can check the race progress uh, on their site. I've included a link to that in the video description. The Iditarod is a real life dog sled race, and it's the reason that we played Dog Sled Saga in March as well as in December uh, to commemorate this historic event. Uh, if any of you guys have ever heard the stories of Balto or Togo. That's what the Iditarod race started as. It was uh, where there was an outbreak of diphtheria up in Alaska, and since there was some really bad weather conditions, they couldn't uh, get the medicine in, and so the only way to do it was with dog sled teams. So we got to pay the bills. Let's just do that. And we have another race. Okay, this one I think would be a good one for our B team. But uh, because they couldn't get the... Um, because they couldn't, oh, that that's that's right, Whiteout needs to be in the race. Because <laughs> they couldn't get the medicine in any other way, they had to run it in by dog sled, and so they had a dog sled relay to get the medicine to Gnome and to save the town. And so the Iditarod is run over that route to commemorate the race every single year now, because they were able to get the medicine in and uh, save a lot of people from the outbreak of diphtheria, so that's what the Iditarod is all about, and uh, I think it's always neat to be able to play Dog Sled Saga every March to commemorate that race and when the uh, current Iditarod race is run. So definitely check it out, there's a lot more info on their site, and uh, I personally like following it to see how it's going. Uh, it's also, it's... It's an interesting thing, it's interesting because it brings a lot of good attention to sled dogs, so... A lot of people, I feel, have a very misinterpreted view of sled dogs. Like, they think that, oh, these people are making their dogs work, that's not good for them. And really, that's not the case. For one thing, sled dogs were bred to do what they do, and so this is literally, like, people people selectively bred them to be able to handle the job and to do well at that job, just like they have for, for other things as well, such as herding dogs are bred to help with herding sheep or, or cattle or other, uh, other animals. And just like that, sled dogs were bred to pull sleds and to run, and they actually love their jobs. They, they will get very excited to be uh, pulling the sled, and they like to be out there working. They actually will get bored and can even be destructive if they don't have enough stimulation. So uh, it's actually not like, it's not like forced slave, la slave labor with dogs like some people seem to think it is. They actually really love what they do, and uh, they'll honestly be very bored and upset if they don't get to do it. So, okay, let's see who actually needs to rest here. Looks like these guys do and everybody else can go back to training. But yeah, I actually used to go urban mushing with my dog, which is basically the desert equivalent of it. Uh, we don't need rope right now. <laughs> we're still we're still good for now. 
Um, I want to get our income stable above 100000 before we take a rope sponsorship, because that'll help ensure that we'll be able to actually afford that and uh, not have problems from it. But yeah, so urban mushing is like the desert equivalent of uh, dog sledding in, in the wintertime out here in the desert. The, a bunch of people get together and uh, will have their dogs pull them on carts or scooters. And uh, it's a great way to exercise your dogs. I did it for many years, or well, for a couple years at least, with Sierra. The only reason I ended up stopping was because she had unrelated hip problems. She's a German Shepherd. They can have a genetic proneness to that. And so it wasn't anything that resulted from the uh, urban mushing. It was just something that came up as she got older. Okay, we're going to have to race a team here. <laughs> um, but, uh, yeah, so we did that for many years, and it was a great way of getting her, e her energy out and getting her to be able to go and exercise. She loved it. She had a ton of fun, and the other dogs did as well. So, honestly, it can be a great recreational activity for both dogs and humans uh, if you have the ability to do that. So they, they really do enjoy it. It's not, they're not being forced to do this against their will. This is, this is what they love doing. Okay, we got to fix this before it causes tangles. There we go. Uh, but yeah, it's, it's something that honestly dogs and humans alike both really tend to enjoy. So if you have that available and you have a breed that, uh, uh oh, that's, I'm pretty sure Polaris may have a, a kind of bad fall. Oh no, no, it was Chase who had a bad fall. Chase was his uh, predecessor, his father. And he had a kind of bad fault, but uh, we just have too proud for Polaris there. So that's actually a pretty good one. Okay, oop, we lost one to the tree, and let's make sure we feed the other dogs as well. But we got a pretty good speed boost from that. Oh, feed Zephyr. Did we get it in time? Just in the nick of time there. Um, but yeah, I just want to clear that up because I know there can be a lot of misconception about it. This is something these dogs do love, and... Uh, they, they really do enjoy being able to get out and pull sleds. Now, not every breed is going to enjoy that, and not every dog was bred to be a working dog either, but uh, a, lot of, a lot of the larger breeds, and especially those ones that were bred to pull sleds originally, do really enjoy this kind of thing. So, for the most part here, we have a team that's uh, comprised of sledding breeds. So, we have Siberian Huskies, we have... Uh, we have a Malamute, we have not a, on the current team. <laughs> oh no, 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 okay, there we go. We still got it to him in time. But not on the current team, we have a Malamute, we have Samoyeds, not on the current team. Uh, German Shepherds can, but again, you have to be really careful with them because they can have a genetic proneness to hip problems, and so, of course, if that happens, they shouldn't be pulling anything. Uh, oftentimes, that doesn't develop until later in life, though, so it can be okay in their early years sometimes, uh, as long as you're careful. And uh, we do have a lab as well, and I believe labs can also tend to have hip problems, so again, it's something you'll just want to be careful of and know your specific dog. But uh, they wouldn't be suited to the sledding portion as much, but I imagine they could probably at least uh, participate in urban mushing where it's not necessarily a cold environment, but labs do have shorter coats for the most part, so you probably wouldn't want them actually out in the cold. Uh, but yeah, so it's it's definitely a pretty pretty fun thing for some dogs. They really enjoy it. And uh, it can give them something to do to help keep them stimulated so they don't get bored and or destructive. But anyway, speaking of our team, we, we're doing pretty good, but I'm hoping we'll be able to get uh, our, our B team racing more soon because we need to train them. And it seems like a lot of our races this time have been centered on the A team and that's not helping them learn. So this might actually be a perfect opportunity though. So let's put, I'm gonna put Aria in. I'm gonna put Talon in. I'm gonna put Pepper in. Um, I'm gonna actually put uh, these two in because I think they need more training than Aria does. So, oh boy. How, how do you have, okay, one from middle specialty. Oh, because we have better rapport with Pepper. That's how she's significantly better there. So we got to keep racing Tyrion. He should get his specialty this time, and hopefully he'll also get some rapport. But I think that'll help. And then Arya can continue to join them for the five dog races whenever we have one that's going to be uh, a level they can handle. Having Tyrion level up here will definitely help. Um, but... Uh, we need to continue to build rapport. I'm definitely... I wish we had more five dog races we could actually participate in with them because I don't want Arya to lose rapport. We haven't raced her for a while. So we need to be a little bit careful there. But 
for the most part, we need to get these two solid because Arya's already had more training. And because she has a level 3 specialty, she should have reduced uh, exhaustion anyway, even if she does lose a little bit of rapport. Uh, but for the, the most difficult races, you really do need to have rapport and specialty because the specialty is only going to get you so far and these races can get very, very difficult uh, to the point where they would cause pretty much even a trained dog to have severe exhaustion. So it's very important to kind of pick a team and stick with it as much as you can, especially once you get to the point where you can have basically like two settled teams. So that's why I'm trying not to mix dogs from this team. Oh, we need to get uh, fame for Whiteout. Oh, no. Oh, no. She wasn't. That would have been perfect, too. Oh, my goodness. Okay. Can we throw this in time? No, we just missed it. All right. And nope. We did not get uh, did not get it to her in time. I'm trying to get her fame, which, oh, no, I probably shouldn't be messing around with that because then I missed Pepper. Um, but that's why I'm, like, trying not to mix these dogs. That maybe Talon a little bit if we have a night race with uh, Avalanche's team because this will kind of keep them more... The, they'll gain rapport with their the dogs they'll be racing with and not just miscellaneous little bits of rapport with other dogs. They'll have a lot with a few dogs. It means that it will be more difficult to mix the teams if we have to, but the point is to get to the point where we don't need to, uh, where each team can race in its own right. And so if there's a few dogs from one team that are tired, we'll just be able to race the other dogs instead, or the other team instead. Let's make sure that these guys all go into resting. We didn't get any major fatigue, so that's good. We'll put Avalanche here in training. And there we go. We can start off again. We want to make sure we pet them from time to time, too, because uh, we do have some dogs that have the petting favorite. What is Arya's favorite? Um, Placing up. Okay, so she actually does need to race to get her favorite. So we do need to get her back in the race as soon as possible. But, uh, well, I mean, she has a pretty bad fault, too, <laughs> although her skill sometimes covers it. But I definitely want to race her as quickly as we can. It looks like, I think the sponsorship offer sometimes glitched because it looked like we were supposed to get one, but we didn't. Uh, this is night, so we're definitely racing B team if we can. This could be kind of tricky, so I'm going to put Pepper in. And I'm going to put Aria in because, again, we do need to race her. And so I'm going to put Tyrion in, then we'll put Tyrion and Pepper instead, or Tyrion and Arya instead of Tyrion and Pepper. Uh, both of them need to continue to level up, but I think Tyrion is lagging a little bit behind in that. This is going to boost Whiteout's exhaustion by a bit, but I think we'll still be okay. And oh my goodness, this could be kind of a tricky one, couldn't it? Alright, let's just keep an eye on things. You two are going to... nope, that was way off. I was trying to get her fame, but that didn't work so well. All right, we got to make sure we jump. That's the jumps are probably going to be the best way to get fame. All right, oh no, oh no, and her fault has occurred. Well, I guess we still fed her, but she's just going to continue to take exhaustion. Oh no, oh no. All right, her fault is still active. Did we get it to her in time? We didn't. Jump, 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 jump. Okay, she's no longer got her fault active now, which is good. No, we missed Tyrion. I'm sorry. All right, there we are. I'm going to try and... Nope, we missed. All right, we almost got it to Tyrion in time, and I think we missed... Oh, we did get it to Whiteout. Yay! I thought we hadn't for a moment there. Okay, her skill is active, so she'd still be able to recover, but she still would take exhaustion for Arya there when she was uh, a little bit hungry. I was worried we were going to miss her, but uh, I think we got everybody back on track. Hopefully we don't have any more bad, uh, bad faults show up. I think that probably was everybody getting their worst out, so hopefully that, oh my goodness, and even me, I keep, uh, I keep, keep missing up and having, having some butterfingers there, not, uh, being able to actually aim properly. I feel like that would be me in this situation, too. Oh my goodness, Whiteout, um, well, hers is just too proud, so we can guess by now she's probably gonna need it. Yep, we were right, and that worked out pretty well. But, uh, yeah, <laughs> um, I forgot what I was saying. I got so caught up in it. Oh, yeah, I was saying I feel like that probably would be me in this situation, too. I don't really do well under under stress, and, and I'm terrible at aiming. Oh, I'm, 
apparently also terrible at actually jumping. I thought we'd already thought we'd already gotten that one, and apparently we hadn't. Oh no, and I think I missed Tyrion. No, Tyrion! Jump, jump, jump quickly! Oh, okay, he his skill helped him recover too, that's right. He has uh, the second wind skill, so even when he's hungry, he can uh, continue to... Uh, he can basically... He, it says he wills himself to recuperate. Well, that was a little bit of a catastrophe. We got second. I don't think anybody... Oh, no. We got six fatigue for Tyrion. My goodness. I'm sorry, man. I didn't mean to, to mess up that badly. We kept missing him because we were trying to feed the others. And I think the tree kept getting his. But thankfully, it didn't transfer into any uh, heavy fatigue. That was completely maxed out pretty much, though. So we definitely need to be careful. I'm going to switch back to training. I'll take the two that are currently resting. And we will give Tyrion a nice long break. So Talon's fine. Wido needs to rest for another day. But pretty much everyone else is okay. Arya didn't take that much fatigue, and uh, she would have gotten her favorite thing from placing up, and it's not letting me pet any more dogs now. So, B team, I think, is gonna have to rest for a bit. Yep, she's no longer fatigued. Alright, five dog race. Well, actually, it might be worth it. I think it's gonna be worth it to race them. So, how much exhaustion does Tyrion have? Does it show? Nope, it's not gonna show us. Uh, if we go here, nope, it's not going to show us, so I'm going to risk it, you guys. He's a little bit tired, but I think, we could, I think we'll be able to manage it. He's only going to have moderate exhaustion. Pepper's going to have moderate exhaustion, and this will build rapport for the entire team. So I think we're going to take a chance and try it, you guys. This will be our last race for the day. Let's hope it's a good one. Uh, I think we've got a good chance of being able to make this work. Okay, let's just go down the line. We've got a tree coming up already. That's never good. Oh no, Tyrion! No! Tyrion's the one we desperately do not need taking fatigue. Alright. I think we're good now. Nope, no, 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 no. I threw that. I didn't throw. see where I was throwing it. You have to actually right-click to click out of it. Uh, rather than throwing it, so you can cancel it by right-clicking, but I didn't do that. I just saw a, I just saw a tangle forming and decided that I needed to intervene before it got worse. All right, if we keep feeding everyone in order like that, we'll be fine. I want to try and feed Whiteout coming down from a jump there, and we also need to race Avalanche's team because I don't want his fault activating. So there we go. I think. We've done it, but yeah, I don't. I don't usually handle stress all that well. I kind of panic. Uh, you guys are, are well aware of how screechy I get when things start happening and uh, when stuff gets real. So I, I, I feel like I would panic and not be able to aim to save my life, just like I do here. Hello. Ah! Are you serious? <laughs> that was not meant to illustrate a point. I was not trying to say I needed to demonstrate that for you. Uh, see, what happens with this game is I miss once, and so then I start feeling more intense and more panicky, because now I've already missed one time, so the dog's getting hungrier, and the more I miss, the hungrier the dog is getting, and the more that I, the more chance that I'm going to have problems because I wasn't able to feed them in time, and so it just escalates my, my intensity and further exacerbates the problem. <laughs> oh, boy. Um... Yeah, there we go. All right, let's jump, and I'm going to throw that to white out. I don't think everybody particularly needs food right now. Okay, nope, 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 nope. Everybody go forward. And I'm just going to continue to throw that to these guys. We've got a lot of wind in these races. It's almost as windy as where I live. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, we, 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 we're going to do it, I think. We'll be able to make it. There is the finish line. And we got it. We got a few less dogs fed there, but I don't think anybody is super hungry anyway. And we did manage to make it into first. So who got fatigue? Tyrion did not. Nobody got extra fatigue, and we did get rapport. So that was fantastic. That was a great way to leave off a bit of a tense episode. Uh, I'm glad that race went so well because I was scared it wasn't going to. But we're going to go ahead and wrap up this episode here for today because it is about that time again. So thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed the episode. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I will see you guys next time. But until then, this is Jay, over and out.